today we are here with a great resource person dr shah nawaz gazi sir and we are really much blessed and honored to have sir with us on the board and it is a real pleasure and real honor for us that we have a legendary legendary sports physical therapist with us on the board to share their incredible experience their incredible knowledge on the topic and specific and their specialty regarding the football medicine so we are having here dr shah nawaz gazi sir to share their expertise on the to topic serious medical events in the football dr shah nawaz gazi is a well acclaimed name a very senior experienced and well known personality in the field of sports physical therapist dr shanavas gaji is having more than 15 years of the experience he has been awarded numerous time on various platforms nationally as well as internationally dr shanavas gaji sir is recently working as a football physiotherapist and fitness consultant for jammu kashmir bank football club since 2006 till today dr shanawaz gaji sir has done their post graduation in the sports physical therapy and has completed their fifa diploma in the football medicine and as a football medicine expert he is also an ex physical therapist for the jammu kashmir state rugby football association ex physical therapist for the railway sports promotion board new delhi in 2008 has been invited as a resource person at various universities of the national as well as international repute in the private as well as the government sector dr shanawas gazi is invited as a resource person and official physio for the afc license coaching course at srinagar in september 2005 he has been conducted a sports orientation program at hamdard institute of medical sciences in the department of rehabilitation science in april 2017 he has also been a team physical therapist for the jammu kashmir senior national football team for the national championship of the santosh trophy in 2016 in jammu he has been presented a case study on the hamstring rehabilitation at apollo hospital physiotherapy conference in the 10th uh, in the september 2017 is also presented a lecture on football for health at hamdard ptcon in the september 2017 conducted workshop various uh, on the various times in the various international universities on the kanisu tapping dry needling and sports performance he has been also presented various paper in the journals of the international repute on the sports physical therapy regarding the uh, sports physical therapy and its importance and football medicine he has been also invited as a speaker in the fourth euro physiotherapy congress held in the rome italy in 2017 and conducted various workshops he is also the member of FIFA football development project for Jammu Kashmir and we are really blessed to have Dr Shah Nawaz Gazi sir with us and it is again a matter of honor for the physio fraternity that Dr Gazi sir is also a chairman of medical committee of pre league Jammu Kashmir football tournament and a joint venture of the JK Jammu and Kashmir football association for the sports sport uh, state sports council and synthetic tough trc from 2018 so there is a lot of things about the shanawas sir it is a brief introduction and i would like to uh, say sorry if i have missed any specific thing or any, if anything uh, interpreted wrong from my side but there is a, a matter of huge pleasure and honor for us that we have a great personality with us and a great senior experience sports physical therapist with us to share their expertise on the football medicine so i would like to welcome you sir 
from the core of my heart on the board over to you sir well uh, thank you iman chu uh, it's an honor for me uh, to present something uh, that's really you know close to me and in which i have really worked uh, really hard and at times i have saved the life of so many footballers when they encounter uh, encountered this uh, these events so before uh, i would uh, i would start i will just like to show you one video Uh, video video is not there sir I, i think we need to share the video screen we can see the ppt only audio was there it's not it's not in the screen uh, okay i will it is not in the screen sir there yeah yes it is there sir uh, absolutely fine sir thank you you watch this hello so serious medical events in football dr iman chu i given uh, you my introduction so so there are two events that can take the life of a footballer on the field of play first is sudden cardiac arrest and second is concussion so in the video you might have seen one of the player all of a sudden he fall down without any prior contact so that was the aim of the video to show you how sudden cardiac arrest occurs on the field of play and even it's not necessary to like we will have a uh, sudden cardiac arrest on only in sportsmen even you might have heard of it like uh, all of a sudden uh, somebody was driving a motorcycle or riding a cycle he suddenly came, fell down and he died so this is sudden cardiac arrest so this is all about we are going to uh, you know interact about this thing now sudden cardiac arrest what it exactly is fine so it is the most leading cause of death in footballers on the field of play uh, most of the players they fell onto the ground and without being recognized without being if you don't have a professional setup there the player can land into trouble we call it as sudden cardiac arrest and it can give you know later result into his death uh, known as sudden cardiac death sudden cardiac arrest should be suspected when a player collapses with no prior contact with another player so uh, in the video you watched he like a player he fell down all of a sudden without being contacted it, and the player when you reach to the player if you call if you speak to him hello what happened he will not respond to you or even if you touch him he will not respond to you and he may or may not have abnormal breathing initially he he may have a normal breathing but later on that will deteriorate he may have gasping and all that so these are these are the cardinal symptoms of a sudden cardiac arrest now incidence means what is the incidence what is its rate frequency of sudden cardiac arrest in footballers is unknown the reason being he it's not being documented it's not being reported as it should be like other injuries fine second in italy from 269 victims of sudden cardiac death it showed that 49 were athletes and remaining 220 were non athletes so it's common in both athletes as well as non athletes this means that the rate was 1.6 per 1 lakh athletes per year compared to 0.0 0.8 per 1 lakh people in general population that mean is if we see in athletic population it's more than the normal population 
a recent survey by FIFA member associations revealed an, 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 an unofficial average incidence of one sudden cardiac arrest in a footballer occurring every month for 10 years. Now, the incidence of sudden cardiac death in young athletes is 0.5 to 3 per 1 lakh per year and this rises from the age of 35 onwards. Risk of sudden cardiac death is dependent on gender. 90% of the male age, most commonly in 40 to 50 years old, and exercises. It depends actually the intensity of your exercise or intensity of the sport. Up to 80% of sudden cardiac arrest or deaths are symptomatic or have no warning signs. So screening is needed. See what is happening. Suppose all of a sudden a player is collapsing. So he has no symptoms sometimes. So it becomes mandatory for us to screen them initially before going any kind of sport or a play. So when we screen, we will come to know there are hidden th uh, uh, things that are hidden. They are not, otherwise we call them as subclinical. So screening becomes mandatory in the prevention of sudden cardiac arrest or sudden cardiac death. So screening is needed to identify who might be at risk for sudden cardiac arrest or sudden cardiac death. What are the possible causes of sudden cardiac arrest? There are a range of conditions which can cause sudden cardiac arrest or death in athletes. In general, most common cause of sudden cardiac arrest or death in footballers is hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So what is happening over there? Suppose over heart muscle, its main function is to pump. When there is hypertrophy of the heart muscle, uh, let me tell you one thing. When we do exercises, muscles, they don't increase in the number. The cells don't increase. They only undergo hypertrophy. Fine. This is a hypertrophy, but there is the, the morphology of the muscle gets changed. So this hypertrophy results in its inadequate or inefficient function. In athletes over the age of 35 years, the most common cause is coronary artery disease. So if you see in your locality, in your sports, like somebody around 25 years, 26 years, 28 years is collapsing. So you must then come to know, no, it could be because of the structural problems or uh, obstruction, uh, or we call this hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathies. If the age of the uh, athlete is above 35, then you can come to the conclusion initially it could be because of the atherosclerosis or other conditions. Now, first thing is hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, HCM. Most common cause of sudden cardiac arrest or death. Characteristic findings is asymmetrical left ventricular hypertrophy. So if we see on echocardiography, what would be the findings? There will be asymmetric. That means right ventricle would be uh, normal, but left ventricle would be hypertrophied with the myopathy of the cardiac muscles. If we do a 12 lead resting ECG, it will be abnormal in 95% of the patients with HCM with T wave inversion and ST depression, usually in the inferior lateral leads or prominent white Q waves. So what does it mean? That means like if we do an ECG of an, any athlete, if he is having underlying this condition, so ECG can pick up and uh, to some extent we will be able to save the life of the player. And if we do the echocardiography, then the diagnosis could be confirmed. Actually, it depends on the uh, physician who is, inter, uh, you know, like uh, who is uh, this uh, intervening the ECG. Then he can suggest further uh, tests like echocardiography or cardiac MRI. Depends on the condition and the clinical presentation. Second is coronary artery anomalies. See, these are the second leading cause of sudden cardiac arrest, usually due to an abnormal origin of the left coronary artery arising from the right sinus of the well cell wall. So when there is abnormality in the anatomy of the vessel, so what is happening? The function of the vessel itself is affected. So when we are exercising, we are doing the physical work, what need to be? The function should be at its peak. Its efficiency should increase. But when the anatomy is abnormal, let me say like this. So you are not meeting the demand of the 
athlete or exercise. So what we do in this, we do transthoracic echocardiography and uh, uh, diagnosis could be made clear. Now is arrhythmiogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy. Suppose, uh, actually there are two reasons. One is the structural and another is the electrical. So sometimes when there is electrical problem, what we will be having the arrhythmias, especially the left ventricle. ARVC is leading cause of sudden cardiac arrest in the Ven Veneto region of the northeastern Italy. Initially, there were a lot of deaths. Then they started uh, investigation into it. They started assessment that included the ECG. But unfortunately, it stayed to them only. It means uh, most of the rest of the world, they could not pick up this uh, means procedure. Till let us investigate, let us uh, assess the athletes at early. It is characterized by a progressive fibro fatty replacement of ventricular myocardium causing the wall thinning and dilatation. See, suppose over muscles, they are purely made of muscle fibers. When they are being replaced by fatty tissue or they undergo fibrosis, what is happening? Their action that is being altered. So they are not able to do the action that they are meant for. So what would happen? The tissue will start doing the altered functions and as a result since heart has to pump the blood throughout the body so when this action is not meant what would happen there will be the blood will not be circulated throughout the body even into the coronary circulation if we do the ecg there will be abnormalities in anterior precordial t waves inversion v1 and v3 if we see and QRS du uh, duration would be more than 110 milliseconds. And in ECG, there will be RBB, right bundle branch block pattern. If we do the echocardiography, it can confirm the diagnosis. But sometimes if clinical presentation is there, the physician or the sports cardiologist, what he can do, he can uh, further ask for the cardiac MRI. Now myocarditis, it's an uh, inflammatory condition or acute condition of the heart. Acute inflammation of the myocardium may lead to lethal arrhythmias. Fine. This has now become the main cause of sudden cardiac arrest in young and middle-aged athletes. So this is again very important. The um, athlete may have some kind of infection or some bacterial infection or some viral infection. And he may, you know, uh, the symptoms may be upper respiratory tract infections. Sometimes what we do, we tell the athletes, hey, there is no problem with this. You have some fever, mild fever. You go and train. No, we should be very cautious. If a player, an athlete is sick, respect his sickness. Give him time so that he gets well. Although it may be asymptomatic, symptoms can include a prodormal upper respiratory tract viral infection chest pain followed by progressive exercise intolerance and dyspnea. ECG may be abnormal. Echocardiogram prevention is possible. See what uh, what uh, does it mean? Whenever as a coach to educate the coaching staff as well as the players. If a player is sick having any kind of fever, any kind of illness. Respect us, give him time so that he can recover. Don't force him for the trains. Fine. The athlete should not exercise while well. Now is the ion channel disorders. It can include QT prolong, we call it as QT prolongation syndromes, short QT syndromes, Bergada syndrome, WPW, and catecholaminergic polymorphic ventricular tachycardia. These are the primary electrical disease of the heart predisposing to lethal ventricular arrhythmia. As, as I previously told that it, it's actually two reasons. One is the structural. That means the structure of the heart is being affected. There is some problem within the uh, morphology of the cardiac muscles. Second is the conductivity. When the conductivity is getting affected, what would happen? For example, for example, if you are doing, okay, if you are doing the exercises, the rhythm and the rate, it should be maintained, it should be synchronized. Otherwise, what is happening? If 
if you have any of these conditions, the, there could be arrhythmia within the heart. What would happen? For example, ventricle and, uh, ventricles and atria, they are simultaneously contracting. So the function of the heart will be affected. Now, when we know these conditions, these can be lethal, these can lead to the death of an athlete on sport. So what is important? Important is how we can screen the uh, heart. That is known as cardiovascular screening because it is the most important thing that we can do to save the life of, a, of an athlete. Due to a series of high profile sudden cardiac deaths in elite football, FIFA introduced a standard as a medical assessment. See, when there were uh, high-end athletes who were earning in millions and trillions of dollars per year, they died on spot and media attention was there. These things were discussed in media. There was criticism to the football governing body. Why do they allow these players with such conditions, such anomalies that this can lead to the death of these athletes? So FIFA introduced uh, an uh, assessment program that is known as pre-competition medical assessment. What it includes, see, actually before going, I advocate to pay parents. Like if you think that you want, that you, are, uh, you want your kids should excel in sports, before going for any particular sport, let you get them assessed. There should be no conditions that could stop their involvement their uh, participation in the sports as you might have uh, read in uh, uh, maggie orthopedic assessment last chapter is there um, uh, something uh, pre-event uh, evaluation that is uh, to some extent similar so what fifa did they collaborated so many things and they came to a conclusion that's known to be as pre-competition medical assessment it includes each and every aspect of an athlete whether his family history, cardiac history, musculoskeletal history, surgical history, everything, his uh, parental history, his drug history, everything. PCMA is mandatory for all players, referees, and assistant referee participating in FIFA competition. See, when players are there, referees are the one who control the game or who conduct their games. So they are also vulnerable for these things because they are also athletes. We can say referees are also athletes. So FIFA introduced this thing. Everybody who is involved in the game of football should undergo this pre-competition medical assessment. The cardiac portion of the current PCME includes a detailed personal and family history. See, you might have heard of somebody saying in a family or society like uh, his father expired at young age. Uh, we don't know what happened to him. His uncle, aunt, so that means there is an element of doubt that something is wrong in their heart. So that is why we ask for the detailed personal and family history. Then we, uh, the, uh, the athlete is taken for a physical examination. That includes his height, weight, blood pressure, ECG, uh, this uh, auscultation, everything. And then echocardiography if needed. Other tests like stress equal and cardiac MRI should be performed as clinically indicated. If you might uh, be watching football, uh, you might have seen uh, commentators, they keep on discussing about these things like in uh, pre-season, how these athletes undergo these different assessment, uh, no procedures. And even I can tell you one thing like now uh, Europa Cup is going, European League is going, English Premier League is going. What they do before letting the players to join the team or before letting the team to join the competition, they did the COVID test first. Then they isolated, they put them in the quarantine so that there are no issues that could affect the health of the athletes. This is now. Similarly, what they do before start of any career, before any start of any uh, this uh, competition or yearly basis, they assess the athletes. Fine. Now, what is the rationale behind? How do we assess? How do we check? What we do, 
we actually try to find out are there any medical conditions that can give rise to sudden cardiac arrest and unfortunately sudden death first second thing we reduce we want to reduce the death of death of an athlete or the possibility of death of uh, players on field or off the field sometimes so what we do when we do the assessment we get some results we act accordingly we advise them accordingly and even we can ask for further investigations if needed several studies have shown that one in 300 people that is 0.3 percent in a wide variety of populations have a cardiac condition associated with burdens that means if this one percent of means uh, goes and participates in any particular sport especially these uh, high intense sports rugby is there football is there hockey is to some extent there or combat sports martial arts is there where there is a lot of demand on the heart and the player can have sudden cardiac arrest and without any proper medical assessment or medical facilities uh, at the uh, venue uh, the player can collapse and he can die now why cardiac screening needs careful planning see it is not in hosh posh or in haphazard manner you go you have an ecg okay ecg is fine then you don't have to worry no there are so many things associated that's why a, a specialist a sports cardiologist i'm saying first there is first line is there is a physician general physician then there is a cardiologist third is sports cardiologist who specializes in sports not only the specializes who treats the sports person because in normal population you will not be getting these uh, conditions quite often but in athletes because athletes are very few suppose if a universe if in a university a thousand graduate students get graduated but if in the same society just five or ten players will be in the professional arena so those five players they are quite important and key to a country's development and its name you know because they are the one who uh, lift the country there are so many famous players like in india we have the cricketers we have the hockey players we have the wrestlers we have the boxers so this thing is quite important like uh, how we need to plan it it should be a planned activity i will tell you one thing suppose when we do exercises so we plan suppose tomorrow i will be doing this 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 but simultaneously we have to plan recovery as well because we have to give recovery to the body so if we plan training we have to plan plan the recovery in the same way when we plan something it should be properly planned because why because sometimes we get a false negative suppose uh, i if i go for an ecg and i become negative so I assure myself there are no conditions that could prevent my participation. And the doctor sometimes say, no, go, boy, you go and play. There is nothing wrong in it. So sometimes these can be false negatives. Studies have shown that history and examination alone will identify only 20% of medical conditions. Suppose if somebody would say, no, my family is well, there is no such history of certain cardiac arrest. And examination is okay there is no as such uh, anything that could be picked up by the physician uh, examining physician so uh, the rational is it's the only 20 percent of the cases that we can caught we can catch only the 20 percent remaining 80 percent are still there the addition of an ecg so we go for a history we go for an uh, assessment putting the status and everything then we go for an ecg ecg increases the sensitivity that means up to the 60 percent so now there are only 20 40 percent of the people who whose conditions could be missed that means out of 160 people can we can say now what about the 40 people 30 percent remaining 40 percent of the conditions associated with sudden cardiac arrest or death still be missing so we need to plan accordingly like if his ecg is okay let me try let me go for uh, for the sake of his health uh, let me go for an echocardiography if something fishy is there then he can ask okay let's go for the cardiac mri fine 
That's why we have to plan. We don't have to go in a haphazard manner, go to some clinic, ECG, okay, ECG is fine. No, we have to plan because why? We have to save life. When an athlete is healthy, then the sport is there. It depends on his health. If a player is injured, you cannot uh, expect him to play. So it is the health is the priority. Also, there are some congenital conditions which could be missed in, uh, suppose, if you are doing only the ECG and other things, and if there is some uh, uh, anatomical anomalies that need careful imaging techniques, imaging systems, like uh, cardiac MRI is there, or echocardiography is there. So we should go into deep, we should dig deep. We should try to find out if something could come up. Why? Because the health is priority. Now, false negative. Players, suppose if they pass the cardiac screening, and they may be, you know, like uh, assured, you know, I don't have anything. And now, subsequently, if sometimes he develops some symptoms, what he will say, no, my test is negative. Likewise, suppose in current scenario, if we see if a person is being tested negative for the corona, does it mean he would be negative for all the time? No, maybe after test, he comes out and he uh, this uh, contacts the disease. He may turn out positive in the same way. If a uh, person or player feels I am negative, no, maybe sometimes he may develop the symptoms, maybe with the intensity of the game. For example, if a player is playing at an, uh, lesser act as an, a lesser activity, what would happen? So his intensity of the exercise is very less. But if he enters into the profession professional system, there the intensity, workout, there are different things. So maybe that may predispose him. So the player should not may feel relaxed. Even doctors sometimes say, boy, go, you don't have anything. No, they also should go and think to the deepest level. And one more thing is like, uh, suppose if we have a, uh, for example, Indian national team is there and they are, mashallah, all fit and everything, nothing is positive. So we sometimes say, okay, we become lenient in terms of the medical facilities that we should have kept it. No, like sometimes we say, okay, as such, we won't be having any kind of certain cardiac arrest or any other thing. Let's wait for the ambulance. If the ambulance is not there, no need. Let's, uh, uh, let's not wait. Let's start the game. So there it's the leniency. We should not take that thing. Now comes the false positive. If somebody comes a positive, but that's a false. Why he came or he or she came positive, even though he is asymptomatic. Sometimes you see uh, if uh, 10 people would have an MRI or an X-ray of neck or back, what would happen? Seven will have some changes. You will come, you will say, okay, there are some changes. Do we have this and this? You will say, no, I'm absolutely fine. That means subclinical. In the same way, if a person comes positive, but he's saying, I, assume I don't have any kind of problem. So that thing we have to take into consideration. For example, about 15 to 31% of high school athletes and 27 to 37 in college athletes lead to positive responses through cardiac screening questionnaires. Unfortunately, in India, we don't have that kind of system. We don't have uniformity. Okay? Like uh, we could have assessment in schools, colleges, then in professional, uh, professional it is there because a boy as player comes from a school. If he is early diagnosed, early assessed, his later part of life would be much better. We can have some interventions, we can have some treatments that could help him to prevent all these things. Distribution between, see, sometimes what is happening, we call it as athletic heart, you all know. Uh, sometimes we call it a left ventricular. Uh, there is one more term I will tell you later. So, uh, if a normal doctor sees, if any doctor sees an uh, ECG of an athlete and uh, he will say, Oh, he's having sinus medicardia. What is this? Then, if the athlete say, I am a sportsman, and he will say, Okay. So, this is maybe normal. I have read somewhere, even if an athlete is having 32 beats per minute, that's normal. Well-trained athlete, marathon runners. If a doctor sees, oh, 32 only, oh. 
how he survived and there should be a distinction between uh, means key physiological adaptations and pathological adaptations sorry pathological changes the physician or the cardiologist should be able to distinguish this is pathology this is abnormal uh, physiology and this is the physiology so he must be able to interpret it ki whether he needs further investigations or not because otherwise he is positive one thing is he is uh, physiological sometimes we, okay we have this is physiological in response to the activity and sometimes it is pathology is there some uh, something wrong is going in the heart however recent advances in the interpretation of a clear ccg have significantly reduced the false positive rates to about 2.5 to 6.6 that means when we have a good interpretation of ecg it is not like like i see ecg one no you need to be trained every day you need to see ecg so that you could read it it's not maybe in interns when 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 you might have been in cardiology department you see ecg now if you see ecg you will be surprised what is this you want to be able to read it the same way x ray if you want to gain confidence in x ray ecg you have to keep on studying keep on reading keep on watching the x rays so that your concept could get strong and it has shown like when this uh, these doctors see no he is normal so that means he is positive but he is normal he, it's not pathological now then we have a uh, positive cases what we need to do we follow up for example in covid we get a test by 7th day if is positive then 20 14th day if it's again positive then 21st day or what what whatever, whatever would be the protocol so accordingly we follow up we ask the athlete to go for the follow up in follow up there are some financial implications that need to be taken care and maybe uh, some places they don't have uh, high end labs fine cardiac screening will produce positive results some of which will be false positive and some true positive so some could be false some could be true true means some may have the pathology there so when we have true positive they need to be further assessed further investigate positive results for example uh, if we have uh, you might have come across some medical conditions in which the doctor says okay let us see after 6 weeks how it behaves let us see after 2 months in the same way if a player is uh, positive in any aspect so we go for a follow up we go for a different investigations we want to see whether it is a progressive if it is there whether it's progressive or not this would include educate financial resources as I, as i told you ki finance is important because some clubs will say ki we don't have that much of budget to go for the pre participation assessment of the athletes and uh, you must have sufficiently trained cardiologist or you must have sufficient facility like cardiac mri or other things sometimes cardiac screening is abnormal but it does not meet the criteria for a particular condition called gray areas for example if the screening is not normal then we see what is it suppose uh, for example i will give an example if we say for rheumatoid athletes for 3 months there should be this 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 there are some conditions fine right? if we say uh, this uh, iso titer uh, is the titration is high uh, 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 this rheumatoid factor is positive to aso is high crp is positive fine but the uh, patient is not having any kind of deformity any kind of bone pains any kind of joint pains stiffness morning stiffness swelling so this uh, this is what i am uh, giving you an example in the same way but in the same way if we have a positive result but that's not fulfilling the criteria for example i will give you a covid example if somebody is having cough soreness in throat that doesn't mean he is covid positive if somebody is having breathlessness maybe because of some other reasons if he goes for a test he, it comes negative so it means that sometimes you get a positive but or asymptomatic patients they don't have any symptoms but they are positive you got it such cases need to be followed up and managed by specialists with sufficient expertise this is what in sports because see if a common person is having this these things so we know 
is the office going guy 10 to 5 is duty then he don't go for any vigorous physical activity but in sports we know his main activity is uh, uh, vigorous uh, exercises so he is prone he is predisposed so that's why in those cases we need to evaluate them further and further now Till now, we discussed about he, how, uh, what are the reasons for certain cardio arrest. Now, if we see uh, somebody is falling down, how can we recognize whether it's a cardiac arrest or it is something different? Fine. Important thing is in uh, suppose this is true with any other medical condition. Suppose if a patient comes to you, if you are able to assess him properly, the treatment becomes quite easy. If it is 50-50, you are not sure what it exactly is. That means your assessment means and tools, they are not proper. You are not following a proper protocol or guidelines. So what is happening? You are not getting desired. You are not getting uh, means the assessment results. So when you are not able to recognize, how come you are going to treat it? Fine. So important thing is how we can assess or recognize. Prompt recognition of sudden cardiac arrest is the first and foremost step in an efficient emergency medical plan when we are able when we are able to recognize that means we can do early intervention see uh, as I showed you video there was a guy who fall down without any contact that means there was no trauma there was no foul he was not being pulled or pushed. So non-contact collapse. Any player who collapses on the field of play without having had any contact with another player or the moving ball is to be registered, regarded as sudden cardiac arrest with immediate response onto the field of play and activation of the emergency medical plan. For example, you as a physio or as a spectator, you are watching a match, what is happening? Is somebody all of a sudden he fall down and you are watching him to that there was no external push or pull to him onto him so first thing is you should take it might be or it is sudden cardiac arrest then the physio should enter the field of play uh, maybe uh, outside uh, india what i have seen uh, you know whom they call paramedics paramedics are the person who are specialized in giving the first year, not uh, Indian paramedics. So they are well trained. They know how to handle the situation, how to use these, uh, how to do CPR and AEDs. So ideally, if uh, a physio is with the team, he rushes onto the field without getting the consent of the referee or match option because there are certain, uh, some time, golden period is there. Within that time, if the player is being treated, his life could be saved. The physio should enter the FOP, means field of uh, field of play, immediately, not to wait to be invited by the referee. The, this immediate response onto the field of play for non-contact collapse was first introduced with support from referees during the 2014 FIFA World Cup Brazil. See, as you saw in the previous video, the player collapsed. Fine. So when there were so many incidents of such collapse, non-contact contact collapse. So FIFA came with an idea with the match officials. Okay, if somebody is collapsing without any contact, the physio will rush onto the field. You don't need to, well, he doesn't need to wait for your consent because the life of the player has to be saved and referees agree. And it was first implemented in Brazil World Cup 2014. Now, first thing is when person collapses without being pushed or pulled. Second thing is unresponsive. When you move on to the player, you ask, you call him. Hello, mister, what happened? He will not tell you anything. He will, he will not, he, he will be restless. He will be, sorry, motionless. Or sometimes he may have some fits or seizures like that. So any verbal or physical stimulus, he will not be responding. Now breathing, the athlete may still be breathing. Normal breathing generally will deteriorate into gasping and slow agony respirations. This should not be inter interpreted as normal breathing. 
you may see the player is breathing but it gets deteriorated as the time passes on so first thing is non contact collapse second is unresponsive third is the breathing pattern now seizures slow seizures like activity presenting as involuntary arm and leg movements is common when there is a sudden cardiac arrest therefore any player who has non contact collapse see these these four criteria is there it's not somebody is uh, not getting down without any contact and he is getting fits or seizures what it with slow seizure like activity on arrival when you reach on to the player you see he is having involuntary movements so you must regard it as sudden cardiac arrest and not mistaken as a seizure pure seizure now first thing was assessment on top of that is recognize how we can recognize whether it is a sudden cardiac arrest or not now you recognize it it is a sudden cardiac arrest then you recognize it what is your response now comes your treatment part like you assess the player or patient then you make a plan okay what should be the line of treatment first we do evaluation we evaluate that you did as a recognition then you go for the cpr cardio pulmonary resuscitation so we give chest compressions uh, they should be started immediately and continued till automated external defibrillator aed the advantage of aed is if you put the electrodes onto the chest or the athlete it will read itself the heart rate whether it is shockable or not shockable whether you have to continue with the cpr or not and continued until aed is correctly applied and ready to analyze the cardiac rhythm interruptions in chest compression should be minimized see we should not leave the player or athlete without continuous cardiopulmonary resuscitation the compression should be hard and fast they should be hard enough so that they can move the blood out of heart into different vital organs and they should be fast there should be not be any pause the rescuer can either do compression only or sometimes they can go for mouth to mouth breathing so sometimes we if we are uh, having two persons for the cpr what we do one goes for the 30 compressions then gives the two rescue breathings i will show you something uh, about cpr why cpr what cpr will do when cardiac arrest strikes the heart stops completely fine hard and fast chest compressions can move some blood through the heart into the rest of the body this can save a life now as i told you the speed what is the speed with which you are giving the compressions every minute for every minute that passes without any cpr or defibrillation shock defibrillating shock the probability a shock will save the victim drops by 10% for example initially if we defibrillate the patient his chances of survival increases so so go get the aed as quickly as possible so this is the possibility of survival if you can see like 90 if we start in first minute 90% are the chances that when the athlete can survive if the time goes on by 10 minutes there is 0% possibility the player can survive this is the golden time likewise if you have myocardial infarction 
the first three, four hours are golden time during which we can thrombolize the patient and we can save the life of the patient. Now, even CPR alone can make a difference. Start chest compressions immediately, even without an AED, good CPR alone radically improves the chances of survival. The probability of success only drops by 4% every 10 minutes if continue doing good CPR. That means CPR is more valid when you don't have an, when, when you don't have access to AED. If you do good CPR after 10 full minutes, the probability of success remains at 60%. That means by 10 minutes, the ambulance could reach to your place and the patient can be safely transferred to the hospital. So this is the possible probability of survival with high quality CPR. Now, CPR provides blood to the brain. By moving some blood to the brain, CPR helps to preserve it from the ischemia. It can also play a significant role in survival quality of the of life. CPR moves blood through the heart to the heart. CPR moves blood to the heart itself. This is critical right after defibrillating shock. When you set the heart rate or rhythm, then after that, the blood circulation should get improved. A shock cannot restart the heart. It only improves the rhythm. It stuns it. Then the heart, almost, heart's own electrical pacemaker can reorganize and restore a natural heartbeat. As it reorganizes, the heart struggles for blood for several minutes. By moving blood through the heart, back to the heart itself, CPR provides critical help to a struggling heart. And see, when we see, whenever there is cardiac arrest, what is happening? The blood gets accumulated into the heart. About four minutes without CPR, the arteries are quiet, have quiet but the veins have continued continuously delivering the blood to the heart. This enlarges the heart to twice its normal volume and prevents a shock from working, even if the heart rhythm is shockable because it is too full of blood to resume pumping. You know, see, sometimes if something, if we fill up a balloon, then we press it. There is some resiliency. When we fill the balloon with full of air, if we start doing something, it can get punctured. In the, similarly, sim in the same way, chest compressions are now more critical than the shock itself because when we give compressions, we are removing the blood, excess blood from the heart because they can restore the heart rate, normal volume, heart's normal volume, and allow the shock to work. A victim down lo longer than four minutes always needs CPR prior to, be, to delivering a shock. What if your AED says no shock? because there are AEDs, uh, AED means automated external defibrillator. When we put it onto the patient's chest, it analyzes, it says stop, don't touch the patient, and we, uh, the, it analyzes. Then it analyzes whether the heart is in a shockable state, whether the shock is needed or not, or the heart needs to continue with the CPR. So shock advisor, CPR moves blood through the heart, back to the heart, which is critical to a reorganized normal heart rhythm. So actually I have learned this uh, BLS and ACLS from Zoll in collaboration with American Heart Association. So that's why uh, I uh, showed you some of the slides from this. Now, now AED, automatic external defibrillator. Immediately after sudden cardiac arrest re uh, re uh, recognition, the defibrillator should be retrieved and positioned next to the collapsed patient. Fine. It should be applied as soon as possible. There are, uh, you know, uh, these uh, disposable pads onto it. We put them. The AED will determine whether a shockable rhythm is present and charge the AED accordingly. The user does not need to do this. It analyzes and it will guide you shock. Then you press the shock button. Otherwise in manual, in uh, old uh, defibrillators, you need to have an ECG, 
then you have to go through the ecg accordingly you decide whether the shock is needed to be or not in this case the machine itself recognizes recognizes whether the shock is needed or not that means your work is reduced and the efficiency with which you could have said ki abhi hai so what is happening ki uh, your intelligence is not tested there because it's very difficult to go through the ecg when you are not used to it see sometimes what is happening uh, what i have come across uh, sometimes when players play they sweat a lot and in, uh, when you have sweat in between the electrolytes electrodes the conduction is not good the contact between the skin and the electrode is not good so what you need to you need to have a towel a scissor you cut the tissue to uh, you know like uh, this clean the skin Uh, remove the sweat and sometimes you need to have a razor why because if you have a razor you the players may have the this uh, hair on the chest to have the good contact uh fine it is recommended that each defib has an accessory kit that contains rescue type scissors a cloth towel two disposable razors and a spare ad pads or extra defibrillation gel as needed now first thing was we uh, recognize cpr then ad now you have to transport the patient to the hospital see when you first understand recognize recognize that it is a uh, sudden cardiac arrest simultaneously same time you call 102 in india you ask for the ambulance emergency ambulance in the meantime you give cpr if you have ad you can go use the ad now transportation how the transportation should be once resuscitation has started a decision must be made as to transfer the player uh, to a medical center for definitive diagnosis because on field you cannot give him definitive treatment you are there to give him a first aid so that you can you can save his life uh, you can make him to live till he reaches the hospital you might have seen sometimes like a person collapses and when when he is brought to the hospital the doctor says like he has been brought dead fine second if the player is to be transported the following steps should be followed actually this is more of a practical and it's not mm, right now possible to show you mm, the things how it has to be done it need to be done on a you know like a player we cannot do it like that but on a, this uh, manicure and other things now uh, i will tell you one important thing there see when we transport if the distance is more like from the ground to the ambulance you start the moment you brace the uh, player onto the uh, stretcher you count 10 seconds once the 10 seconds reach you put down the stretcher give cpr for one or two minutes then go for more 10 seconds and like this you have to keep repeating the this cycle so that the cpr continues until the patient uh, reaches to the ambulance in ambulance we have to continue the cpr till the patient reaches to the hospital for the definitive treatment and diagnosis now what are the outcomes sudden cardiac in arrest in athletes is largely a survivable event through prompt treatment and access to an aed with survival rates as high as 89% so that means if you are educated if you are experienced if you are well trained in basic life support and at a advanced cardiac acls life support what you can do out of 100 90% of the patients we can save that means you are a savior this is the work of a physio or a doctor because you are there to save the life fine there seems to be a trend towards better outcomes likely to early identification see as i told you that early identification is the important step towards the treatment and defibrillation more recent studies have are showing better survival rates i remember once there was a match in uh, iran versus some i don't remember exactly so a spectator met sudden cardiac arrest and he his life was saved by the side uh, the physio over there one study has shown that male athletes may be more likely to survive than the female athletes actually there is lot of research still going on 
and lot of studies are going on and lot of things have to be even studied rapid cooling and induced hypothermia for 24 hours in sudden cardiac arrest victims with ventricular fibrillation arrest have shown improved survival and decreased neurological complications i think this is enough you move smarter move better perform great thank you no problem thank you thank you sir thanks yeah yes sir please yes sir thank you sir thanks a lot for uh, such a wonderful session and feeling so much proud being a physio after today's session that uh, as being a physio we can also save the life so we should be much smarter and much better than previous and thank you sir thanks a lot it was a uh, highly uh, interactive and highly knowledgeable session and we have learned a lot uh, in this session everything you have covered in a so uh, well way that uh, from the serious injuries and the management of the serious injuries by the physiotherapy and specifically specifically emphasizing the role of physiotherapy or a physiotherapist in the medical management and medical complication management so thank you sir thanks a lot and for such a great session and if you uh, would allow sir can we go ahead with the question answers if there is some queries sure sure thank you sir thanks sir now i would like to request all the participant if anybody has any query they can ask they can write down in the chat box now we are open for the questions we are receiving a great compliments in the chat box sir and uh, great feedback is there it was a really a wonderful and uh, highly interactive session and we are maintaining around 100% attendance during the session because we have initiated with around, uh, with around somewhere 30 and 35 participants and at the end again we are having the same participation numbers so this is the aura of the session that we have maintained the full attendance during the session and we are attending uh, very curiously and learned a lot during the session and there is no such queries in the chat box and it definitely says yes we have learned everything it was so well explained and it was so well elaborated with a great in depth information of each and every aspect so we are really uh, grateful and uh, delighted to have uh, shanava sir with us on the board i can yes sir uh, i i want to add something yes please sir see uh, if you go on uh, this uh, application center with uh, this android or uh, this ios yes, there is an app uh, oh. that is uh, 11 fifa 11 uh, that is in a small app in that uh, 11 steps are there they will okay. teach you each and each and every step each and every step there uh, how to do cpr how to put the aid how to transport the player to the ambulance and then to the hospital what i will do i will send you that i will share that app with you on whatsapp yes sir definitely so that you can share it forward and they can get it because that app would be in your mobile phone if you feel any time you are there and somebody collapses like this then even at the same time you can open up the app you can have it so many times you can see so that you can yes, at least give at least something you can save his life till the patient reaches to the hospital definitely, uh, definitely. thank you for uh, have i written the right See, there is there is, a, there is a question there is a question yes sir uh, thank you sir but can there be sudden cardiac death after direct collision and collapse of an athlete See, there is a condition that's known as comatocordates there is a uh, actually during the cardiac cycle a phase is there 0.4, 0.4 seconds uh, is there if during that phase a player is hit on the chest he can have the cardiac arrest so what i will tell you better uh, go far uh, see there is a fifa book 
on uh, this uh, available on uh, this play store you go through that chapter you will come to know how see ideally we we say ki if somebody is being hit on the chest he dies what is the reason so the condition is comotocordites particular period of that cardiac cycle he is being hit you go through that book it can elaborate it can you know open up your mind and uh, before any competitive match we need to follow up the cardiac condition or not see as i told you when you go for the cardiac screening then positive uh, false positive or false negatives can come so you need to follow up them thoroughly before proceeding for an any uh, game because you cannot risk the life of the player if you are in doubt you don't have to allow him to play maybe by matlab uh, god forbid ki he may uh, come across the same situation and the patient may die fine uh, it is in the case komodo cordis thanks for the lovely session before any this uh, just give me a second i want to check if there is Time and yes, I am. I am telling you. Yes, sir. I, I think there is no. I am telling no. you. Everybody, I am telling you. One thing, one thing. When you work as a physiotherapist, you introduce yourself as a physiotherapist. Tell them I am a physiotherapist. Don't give them other uh, prefixes and suffixes, because that's not acceptable unless you work. Your work should speak volume about you. It's not your name. people should say no he is a savior he is such a wonderful person with such a knowledge with such a uh, fine hands and the way he treats important thing is your assessment how fine tuned are with your assessment then treatment is quite easy fine anyway uh, you, i hope i am quite thankful to you all people who really appreciated and uh, i hope ki some other time i will get something Uh, different uh, for these people uh, we can discuss something different inshallah yeah, yeah. i hope to okay, give some more time some other time yes, anyways thank you himanshu thank you sir thanks a lot uh, we are really grateful to you uh, that you have spared your precious time to share your incredible knowledge with us on the board and really it was a matter of pleasure and honor for us that we had a great personality like you with us and we would be definitely uh, thankful to you that you have assured for your future support and future cooperation also and we are also blessed to have so many senior faculty members who continuously support and bless us for our these endeavors and we are really uh, much grateful to our, my teachers uh, dr harsh rajdeep sir dr charu ma'am dr ritu rajdeep ma'am and many other senior physical therapists who are joining us from the world wide dr amita anup sharma ma'am she is a senior physical therapist in the saudi arabia and dr kalpana jutsi ma'am and dr jitain munjal sir they joins us from the delhi so they are the senior academician and senior physical therapist at the north Medi uh, north dmc medical college delhi so we are really uh, grateful to you and many other uh, senior persons who has joined us for this uh, great session and for many other sessions we are really grateful to all of you for supporting and blessing us and thanks to the all the participant who shows their faith on us that we can create some learning by this platform thank you very much to all of you heartfelt thanks to the resource person of the day dr shahnawaz sir and great uh, very grateful for their future support also thanks a lot sir we'll meet back again on the next friday the session and the details will be disclosed very soon so till then Stay in touch. Stay safe. Take care and good night. Thanks a lot, sir.